Brad's now taking emery cloth, cleaning up the crankshaft, and he's going to be taking brake clean, cleaning it off, and then drying it. Very important to make sure it's very clean when it goes into the block. <laughs> I'm hoping the cab will be able to be painted then. After the bearings were put in, this Brad's now taking the crankshaft and going to lower it into place. You want me to help you? Phil, I'm an expert. Before putting the crankshaft in, Brad had put white grease onto the bearings and now he's putting it down into place. Once the crankshaft is put in, the next thing to do is stand the engine on end. After it's on end, Brad will start putting in the pistons and the liners. Brad's taking an etcher and marking, numbering all of the pistons. Uh, yeah, it's soap for the O-rings and oil for the uh, the top ring, and they have to go in a certain order because there's coolant here and there's oil here, so you have to have the right O-ring according to the what it adjacents to. So this would be the top O-ring against the coolant. This would be the middle O-ring. And this is the uh, o-ring that's against the oil side of the liner. That's why they're different colors. New connector rod bearings I'm installing. This is the top half. Make sure the deck of the block is clean where the liner sits on it. Otherwise the flange of the liner will crack when you go to push it in. And I'll install the lower half of the connecting rod bearing in the rod cap. Lubricate the connecting rod bolts so you get an even torque. And you just torque the connecting rod bolts to initial torque. 
this engine it's 65 foot pounds and they use a torque turn method so you torque it to the initial torque and then 90 degrees so you have to mark the connecting rod cap and the bolts And then turn, uh, turn it another 90 degrees. Now that we got the cylinder packs in, we're going to install the cooling jets, which lubricate the wrist, the wrist pin and cool the head of the piston. And torque the cooling jet for the next piston.